Jojo was a man who thought he was a loner, thought he knew it couldn't last. Jojo left his home in Tucson, Arizona, for some California grass. Get back, get back, get back to where you once belonged. Get back, get back. Get back to where you once belongs. Hi guys, this is how to play the easy beginner's version of Get Back by the Beatles. In this video, I'm going to be covering very little of the riffs and none of the lead lines. This is just the easy beginner's version with the chords D, A and G in line with my beginners course which if you click the link below this video it will take you to the other nine songs in this series that you can play with just these three chords G, A and D. This song, uh, absolute classic obviously Paul McCartney plays this at pretty much every gig he does no matter what it is I'm pretty sure. Um, we're gonna start with an A major for two bars. Go to a D major for one bar and then back to A. So A, A, D, A, a bar of each. If we just start just strumming on the beat, uh, no capo needed, this is the original tuning of the song as well, um, just playing down strokes on the beat to start off with in. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three. Then your D, back to A and loop that from the top A A again and a D back to A keep it going Jojo was a man who thought he was a loner to a D and back to A from the top A, two, three, four A, two, three and D and back to A. Okay, pause there. On the repetition of that chord sequence when we're playing the chorus, the last bar of A is just for two strums and then we strum your G chord once and your D chord once. G, D, right next to each other and then we go back to the, to the top of your chord sequence. So that last bar of A becomes one, two, G, D. Quite a tough change when you're not used to it. And it's very much an electric rock guitar type thing um, the, that pattern d does. It's very kind of, um, there's a couple of videos that I'm doing on ACDC songs later on where we've got um, this happening. Um, an awful, an awful lot. So, um, very much a classic rock thing to do, but here it's kind of in a nice sing-along Beatles song. Um, so, that one bar is the trickiest bit, and you're going to really need to make sure that you're doing this way of playing a G, which has your third and little finger down, the way I nickname a Noel Gallagher G, so that you can keep your third finger down when we change to your D chord, and we can do it nice and quick. And then you can play your A major in this song any way that you like. I'm keeping my first finger down, middle finger above, third finger below. But any way of going back to an A chord is totally fine. Your other options are three fingers in a row like this. It sounds exactly the same. Or we've got your more rock guitar way of playing an A major like this. Which again, if you play it a certain way, it sounds exactly the same. There I'm very much lifting my finger off um, of the thinnest E string so that we can still hear that. And I've got my three strings that would need separate fingers any other way, all pressed down with one finger, essentially so that my other fingers are free to do a kind of status quo Chuck Berry riff. Um, which I will be showing in, in later lessons and going into, I'll probably do this video again with um, the lead lines and, and all the riffs because it's really great for, for, for the riffs in this song but for the reasons of this beginners course we're just sticking to this way of doing it. So that last bar of A, 
One, two, three, four is the tricky bit and that only happens in your chorus and any of the solos that happen in the song. It doesn't happen in the verses or the intro. Okay, so let's just have a go. Keep it on the beat and let's just integrate that G, D change um, at the end of your chorus. So same chord sequence with that at the end. In two, three, four. A, two, three, four. A, two, three, four. D. Okay, here it goes. A, G, D. And then straight back to A for another repetition of that. Three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, D, and again G, D, one, two, G, D. You might want to pause this video and practice that a couple of times to, to really get it. It happens an awful lot in the song. Um, the next step is to add our eighth strumming, all on downs, so one and two and three and four and. If we go for twice through the normal chord sequence, so the one for the verse that we did initially, just as a bit of a warm up with your eighth strumming, and then we'll go for your chorus with the G, D at the end of it. Now you'll want to bail from this strumming to do that G, D, because it's just one strum of each chord. No need to go one and two, okay? It's just G, D. If you want, you can even when we get back to the A chord for the two beats and before the G, D, you can just strum A once as well, just to prepare for that change. So your chorus would become your A strumming, the two bars, a D, A, G, D. Okay, I bailed early to enable me to get to that G, D change, and that's a, a really cool tip for you. But let's just try and integrate this strumming into your verses, okay? So no G, D change to begin with. In two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and a D. Back to A. From the top, A. A again. And a D. A. Okay, same again, with G, D at the end. Two, to a D, D. Here we go, A, G, D, one more time, A, D, and A, G, D, finish on the A, to make it sound like it's resolved, make it sound like it's finished. Cool stuff, okay, as I say, there's a lot of different um, riffs in that, and we can do different rhythms. Um, the one other section of the song that you'll want to know about is after the organ solo, there's another chorus and kind of right in the middle of the song, the chorus is slightly different. It finishes on a D rather than going back to the A. So get back, get back, stay on the A, back to where you once belong. It's about 1 minute and 15 through the song, and then that happens right at the end as well. So the song's pretty much a repetition of the first half of the song, and then it's, it's this exact same again for the second half of the song to get you to your 3 minutes or so. Um, other than that, other embellishments that you might want to try. In the chorus, if you can hit what we call an A7, it will give it the real feel of the record and give you an impression of the other riffs that I was talking about earlier, the other little guitar parts. This, get back, get back. Okay, that's the bit that we're going to be looking at. So we've got an A, and then your A7, which depending on um, which way you play an A, in the way that I play it with my first finger in the, as the middle finger of the three, um, we want to take that one off. And whichever finger is on the third string, that finger simply lifts off. Whichever way you do it. I really prefer to do it this way. I find with my students that helps to get all the strings ringing out and it's sounding really good. And these seventh chords are really important because it can be, um, it's a different type of chord. So we've got major and minor chords, which I'll be doing another video about later. And um, it's very hard to distinguish between different letters in chords. 
So um, we've got a G, D, C. It can be hard to hear those and be able to identify them, okay? It's possible, and it's, it's a skill that can certainly be taught and trained, but it's, it's difficult. Hearing the difference between major and minor, which will be happy and sad, isn't hard. It's, it's, it's much easier. It's much easier for people who've no training in music at all to hear it. And this seventh chord um, is the same type of thing. It's, it's much easier to hear a seventh chord than it is to distinguish the, the letter names, in, in my opinion, once you know what you're listening out for. Now, of course, major chords sound happy, minor chords sound sad, seventh chords sound bluesy. They very much sound bluesy. Um, any chord with a number at the end of it does is technically a, a jazz chord. But seventh chords, which are technically dominant seventh chords, um, because that note goes down by two frets, that note, which is an A, has gone down to a G, so that's gone down two frets, that is technically a dominant seventh. If it just says A7, that's basically a shorthand version for it saying A dominant seventh. Um, there's no real need for you to know that, but it's just cool to be able to box these things in together because there are major sevenths and other types of seventh chords um, that sound different. These ones are way the most common, easily the most common, and they sound bluesy. So that A7 sounds bluesy. I have had my fun, if I don't get well no more. Okay, it sounds really, really old school, like dark bluesy. Um, if I play just the normal A chord, it just sounds like a chord. It just sounds like any, any other chord. There's no character to it. Um, this seventh sounds, it has character. It sounds bluesy. Where that fits in the song, one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. And you'll want to let it ring out a little bit more, so not keep going with your, um, your eighth strumming. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. That's the best way to do it. If you're unsure of how that part of the song sounds or you've not noticed it before, but this is now thinking, oh, maybe I have heard that bit before, um, just check out the song. Um, listen to the record and just copy the way you hear. There's lots of other bits happening there, but try and pick out. Get back where to do it and just copy exactly what you hear. Um, it's fairly s straightforward as a, a part to, to learn because a finger just comes off. As I say, in the, my favorite way to do it, just take your first finger off from this way of playing an A with your first finger in the middle on the, on the third string. Because you're just taking a finger off, it's fairly straightforward to do. So let's have a go at doing that just in the chorus part, fitting the seventh chord in with your G and D as well. Okay? So nice and slow in one, two, three, four. Get back to a D, get back to where you once belong. G D, G D back. Get back. Get back to where you once belong. G, D, end on A. And that's all the different parts that we're going to go into in this Easy Beginners video. Um, check out the other songs in this series with just three chords, G, A and D. Um, follow the link below to the links on my website where we've got a video lesson for all the songs that you can play with these chords and slightly easier ones, slightly harder ones. Um, subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you dig what I do and I will uh, make you more videos.